If we take a sample of water from the ocean, we might find plankton, which are minute creatures whose motion is well described by diffusion. However, plankton can only survive and reproduce under certain conditions that only exist in some parts of the ocean. How does the size of a plankton-friendly pocket of water affect the population of plankton in the long run? We consider the one-dimensional case where the plankton-friendly water is a segment of a long thin tube from 0 to L. Since the plankton cannot survive outside of this tube, we apply zero boundary conditions at both ends. The plankton will reproduce at rate k and diffuse with constant d. The reaction diffusion equation that describes the system is dc dt equals d times cxx plus kc. We find the solution through separation of variables, and using Fourier series, we can express c as an infinite sum where each term is the product of a function of space and a function of time and where b sub n are the Fourier sine coefficients and n are the Fourier modes. The dominant behavior of u is determined by the first Fourier mode, and in particular, the exponential factor which varies as a function of time. The sign of the argument of the exponential will thus determine whether the population of a plankton will grow, stay the same, or decay as time tends to infinity. We are interested in how population depends on the length l, and we say that the critical length is L sub c equals pi times square root of d over k, which we obtain by rearranging the terms of the argument of the exponential for the first Fourier mode. Above a critical length L sub c, the population of plankton will thrive and increase. If the length of the tube is less than L sub c, the plankton will diffuse out of the good waters faster than they can reproduce, so the population will die out. If L is exactly the critical length, then the rate of plankton leaving the tube and the plankton reproduction will be the same, so the population will converge to a non-trivial steady state where the plankton concentration is zero at the ends and reaches a maximum in the middle. How does this relate to reaction diffusion equations? If we go back to our model, we see that we have two terms. The diffusion, as we have studied before, always has a stabilizing effect since it spreads things out. On the other hand, the k times c term is analogous to exponential growth, so it destabilizes the system. When we are in the L less than L sub c regime, then the diffusive term dominates the long-term behavior, whereas if L is greater than L sub c, then the reactive term dominates. Finally, if L equals L sub c, then the diffusive and reactive forces balance exactly. This example should convince you of the importance of spatial domains on the behavior of reaction diffusion equations. This will be important as we begin to study pattern formation and the types of patterns that form when we constrain space in different ways.